Sometimes when you watch anime, you have that character you love, and then when you notice that that episode is going to be focused on the character you love, you just get really, really excited. It might be kind of a stretch, but episode 8 of Little Witch Academia is probably one of the best anime episodes I have watched in my whole life. You know, when I think about like, what's your favorite anime episode ever? It's hard to pinpoint only one, but I can pinpoint like five. And I think that this episode is among those five. And I don't know, it, I think that it's gonna even be a little hard to say why. And it's gonna be a little, a little hard to explain myself, but I don't know, if you watched this episode, you know what I'm talking about. What can we even say about episode 8 of Little Witch Academia? First we have Susie, which is... Um, she is one of the greatest characters. I was debating inside myself, against myself, um, whether uh, she or Lottie was going to be my favorite character, but it's hard to fight against Susie. Even though sometimes she gets a little on my nerves because of this carefree thing, I mean, not caring about others, uh, the not caring about others feeling that she exudes. But you know, it's hard. It's hard not to love, it's hard not to adore Susie. And after this episode, it's even harder. Okay, so let's just talk about the general plot. Uh, we had a little uh, conflict because uh, she was using a little bit of her magic and then she got exhausted and then uh, Lotte um, read something about a curse on witches, on a curse like a disease or something that happened when you use too much magic. And then uh, she got asleep and Akko, obviously Akko, went in to save her. And then uh, she entered inside Susie's mind. That's a recipe for disaster in some cases, but in this case, it was a recipe for the greatest plate that we've ever had. And then, um, when Akko entered Susie's internal world, she started meeting lots of Susies. And it was interesting because the two main Susies that actually helped her, I don't know if helping is the right word to use here, but uh, both Susies were um, the, the little angel and the little devil that we have. like in media in general that some people have, like the, the devil part and the angel part, both speaking. And then um, usually the angel is the cute one, is the one that's gonna be good. But in Susie's case, even the angel, even the angel is not that good. And then, um, you know, it's very interesting and it's part of her character, I understand that. And then uh, we get to meet lots of other different Susies. And then uh, I, I was thinking to myself, like, I, I, I saw that I, in my, I, I saw myself in that because, you know, uh, I feel like we're all like this. We all have very different, multiple versions of ourselves inside us. And um, I don't know if this is a Gemini thing. You know, astrology is not my strongest point, but I know lots of things about Geminis and I'm a Gemini. And that's the thing that they usually say about us, that we're two-faced, but that's not the case. We're people with multi-faces. This is a characteristic of Jiminis in general. And I don't even know, I don't think Susie is a Jiminy, but um, I, I kind of saw myself in that, in that because, you know, I feel like that a lot. I feel like there are so many layers inside of me and it's not like I can turn one off and then I can use another part of me. No, they just come naturally. I don't have any control over them. And it's interesting because in this episode, there was a very, very interesting scene, which was uh, the courtroom scene. In that scene, we got to know lots of Susies, lots of different Susie personalities. And those Susies uh, all represented parts of Susie that Susie doesn't like to have. So she cut them off right at the beginning. So we had a Susie that wanted to read Nightfall. We had Susie that wanted to use long lashes. We had another Susie that liked uh, Western artists or Western, the, the lives of Western artists. And then all of them were being cut off. And I was like, oh my God, don't do that. 
Don't do that. Use your personalities. Let them shine. And then, okay, so um, first, I think that I have to say this. All this, no, let's, let's leave it for later. Uh, okay, so um, next we know um, we get to meet another Susie and then uh, they got to a movie. That movie is uh, another thing that reminded me a lot of Disney. And you know, I think that Little Witch Academia has a lot of Disney in it. Uh, maybe they're inspired by some aspects of Disney. I don't know. But um, it felt like the, the old age Disney uh, cartoons when they were appearing like that. And I loved seeing Diana in Susie's eyes because we barely see how Susie sees Diana. We don't know anything about it because she barely reacts to Diana most of the time. And then now she did. She did react and that was very funny. That was very nice and that was very interesting. That's a very interesting part of her. That's a very interesting part of how she thinks and then we were able to see that. And the way that Akko was handled in, in that scene was not new to us. We know how, how she looks to Akko. But it was interesting. It was very interesting. It actually made me a little emotional to see that she has lots of good memories of Akko. She holds Akko dear to her heart, you know, even though she uses her like her guinea pig, there are very uh, dear mo moments and dear memories that she made with Akko and she considers them precious and that that's at least that's how I felt in that scene. And that was very interesting, you know, that's, that was something that I liked a lot. And I would like to see more of Lotte in Susie's eyes. Uh, that was something that um, went missing for me. I think that it would be a great thing, but unfortunately it didn't happen. Or if it did, it was very short. I'm not even remembering. I just watched the episode. And in the end, uh, things just got really messy and uh, another Susie ended up being a crazy, psycho, horrible monster. And she just wanted to control everything and she just wanted to destroy everything, consume everything. And that that's when uh, this idea of personality and cutting your personalities comes into play. Because when Susie, the judge, was cutting the personalities and sending them to death penalty, I thought, okay, don't do that. They're very important parts of you. But then uh, there was this, uh, this other part saying, look, there are some things that you have to cut from yourself. You can't live with some of the things. And there are some other things that you have to cut from yourself to live in society, to live with people, to be a society member. You have to cut them off, you know? And, and I was thinking, wow, this is very interesting. Your personality is full of worth, but there are some things that we have to work on. You know, there are some things that we have to cut because if we don't, monsters will emerge from inside of us. We all have those inside of us, you know. At some point of life, we think bad things and we have to cut them off. And, you know, the, 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 the general um, argument is this one, that those parts of the personality you have to cut away. But uh, the, the, the general uh, argument of this episode was this. But then uh, there was, um, I, I, I'm going to make a counter argument because those parts that were sent to death penalty in the episode itself were parts that did not need to be cut off from, uh, from Susie's personality. They're not bad parts, even though Susie considers them to be bad and they're not bad parts. They're not going to be um, prejudicial to Susie herself, but I understand in a narrative standpoint, I understand that they had to show that so that they didn't so that they didn't spoil the surprise in the end because I was not expecting that development. And then we we got to know lots of other Susies in the way, lots of crazy animation, and then we got to the scene in which Akko found the original Susie that was sleeping. And then um, I'm gonna go back to what I wanted to say in the beginning, in the middle. I don't even remember when, but okay. We're talking about an internal place. We're talking about Susie's mind or soul. I don't know. 
but in its Susi internal place. And that's for you to represent that in, um, in the visual setting is not easy. Because when we dream, we most of the time we don't have linearity. The, the backgrounds might not be always what we consider normal. And they nailed it 100%. Everything felt very surreal, very dreamlike, very susy. And the sceneries changed, like when we're dreaming. Like they change very fast. And another interesting thing is that some of the things, like some of the, the, the scenes had different drawings, different styles, like the movie part. And then uh, when we got to the end, right at the end of the episode, we had the, that scene in which um, Susie was sleeping and Aqua was there. She was going to save her. And, uh, you know, the, the, the scene was drawn in a very poetic very uh, robustic way and you know it was very beautiful very stylish just to represent this romantic thing and everything but then uh, obviously it was nothing like that but um, uh, Akko was able to wake Susie up and that was a very interesting um, animation scene but then I always talk about the animation and I, I have to go back to the animation thing which is, the animation is amazing, the animation is great, and now that they did an even greater job, wow, I'm just dumbfounded, you know, I'm astonished with the quality of the animation, the quality of this episode, oh my god. And I'm saying lots of oh my gods lately, whatever. Uh, and then, um, right after um, Susie's um, scene in which he woke up. We didn't really know if what actually happened was true or not. Was it just a dream or did it really happen? What was really going on there? And you know, we ended up being a little thrown out in this dream-like situation and we, I got very confused. I was like, oh my god, I can't believe this wasn't true. It was just Akko's dream. No, no, no. Come on, come on. And I think that it ended up being true, actually, uh, because of uh, Akko's and Susie's conversation at the end of the episode. Uh, it ended up being uh, like the very, very, very uh, uh, last scene. And I think that it ended up being true because of that. And, and that's very nice because it just adds more and more depth to Akko's and Susie's friendship. You know, it's something more. It's something, um, it makes me feel more and more love from one another, you know, from, from both of them to one another. I, I got a little confusing, I know. I got a little confusing in the way that I expressed it, but, you know, the way Susie sees Akko and the way Akko sees Susie, sees Susie uh, it ended up strengthening their bonds. That's what I wanted to say, I think. So, greatest episode so far, one of the greatest anime episodes ever. Ever, ever. If you're not watching Little Witch Academia, you're losing out. But, I mean, if you watch this video until this point, you're probably watching Little Witch Academia and you're probably loving it just as much as I am. So, please leave a comment with your opinions. Um, let's just talk about the, so many things in this episode we can talk about, right? And, I don't know, I just want to watch this episode again and again and again. I want to make lots of different GIFs of it because there are so many great scenes. And, I don't know, I just love you, Susie. You're such a great character. And the characters and the studio and the writers are doing you justice. They're really doing you justice. Guys, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, bye-bye.